Hello. Hi, Paul. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul. Cool. It'll get me every time. I know. Oh, man, I'm ex- we have a good show today. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm gripping my coffee like we're on a morning show. <laughs> I'm not doing my Regis impression. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, okay good. yeah, but who are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking to Caroline Doherty. Yes. And um, today's episode is specifically about careers that we have at NOV. And, yes. Um, I think people maybe hear oil field or, right. I mean, we're technically uh, energy manufacturing. So exactly. Beyond that. But even still, there's that stigma of like, oh, you are, so you all go offshore, you rig can? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of careers. There's a lot of different jobs that happen here. Yeah, yeah, and so this is we want to talk to one specifically today, and her name's Caroline, and she's sharing a little bit about um, business intelligence, mm-hmm. uh, data intelligence. I think is another right. Kind of word, data and analytics, right? Kind of that space. So we get some insights into her job, but also I think it was about um, the pathway of careers, yes. like how do you get to the job that you have, not just like right. we have a. NOV has a wide breadth of positions mm-hmm. and things you can do, but like you're not pigeonholed in case yeah. you feel that way. There is so many different weird ways that people get to their jobs that they have now at NOV. Yeah, it's almost the, like the NOV story. Yeah. It's like that you start one spot and then end up finding your. Doesn't path. mean you have to. Yeah, doesn't mean you have yeah. to. That's true. That's true. Well, there's anything wrong with that? Yeah. No. Yeah. But Some it's of just us started in marketing and are still here. Yeah. Because we like it. So she's <laughs> uh, one great example of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's go let's go meet Carol. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, yeah, we can get get started. Yeah. We have Caroline Doherty here, director of business intelligence. Thanks Caroline. for being here. Thank you yeah, for having thanks me. For coming in, yeah. And we're talking, I think, a little bit of background for this show. We're talking about careers at NOV mm-hmm. that maybe people don't think of when they think of oil and gas right away, and kind of the assumption is you know like rig hands or going offshore something or, dirty yeah i don't yeah, know yeah. um i know i mentioned engineering but we do have some engineers so i won't i won't we got a say. lot of engineers <laughs> yeah so that, that is maybe a little bit true of a stereotype but right. <laughs> um yeah so i wanted to bring you on to talk a little bit about um what i had originally called big data i have since learned that maybe that's it's a naughty word a little outdated <laughs> it's not a naughty word it just reflects like the, the data industry is continuously evolving, yeah. right. um, and you guys probably have heard lots about like AI in the news and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but a few years ago, the focus was on just amassing this huge amount of data from every possible mm. source. And now the industry is really kind of shifting towards like, how do we make use of that data? Okay. So whether that's in you know a more traditional analytics sense where we look at what the data actually has, or whether mm. we're trying to do something predictive like AI or machine learning, um, you know, the, the industry is really focusing less on where do we get all this data from. We've kind of figured that part out, mm. and we're really shifting more to like what can we do with it. So, what what are some no, what is the nomenclature that's used now that maybe would have been used for big data as big data? But so what do we say now, or what 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 does your your team like? How do you label yourselves or the field that you study <laughs> in? Or? So, a very generic term would be data and analytics. Okay. It's kind of like kind of all encompassing of amassing this huge amount of data and then doing things with it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, my team is called business intelligence. It's a little more like it's a little more traditional of a term, specifically talking about mm-hmm. um, getting the data in and doing like traditional dashboarding and reporting on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the industry seems to be shifting a little bit more in the direction of what's called decision intelligence, mm-hmm. which incorporates all of that plus additional tools like forecasting and other like crystal ball reading activities. Yeah. Now, does that involve any type of AI in, is that wrapped up in that as well? Since we're going to be talking, you're talking about decision making? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the the reason that we compile all this data is to improve our decision making. It's to say, okay, so based on where we've been or based on where we think we're headed, this is the direction we should take. Right. Mm. Or to look at, you know, maybe there are specific items that need to be addressed in the business, things that are an issue that we didn't necessarily like see with just our eyes. Yeah. So um, there, there's talk of what's called like decision-centric reporting or decision-centric intelligence, which is to look at it not just as like, hey, we provide you a list of all your, your sales and whether you are on time with your delivery or not. Mm-hmm. It's also trying to look at, you know, what were the factors that went into that and provide information on that in the same report so that people have all the tools that they need to make better decisions and to adjust what they're doing today. Right. in response to what they're actually seeing in the data. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And from, I think, 
from talking to you a little bit before this, there's kind of two areas of what we're now calling it, the business intelligence. Can you talk a little bit about what those are? So um, my team has two core responsibilities. So we do data warehousing, which is to pull, to date, pull together data from many different sources in NOV. Um, we're primarily focused on what's going on in our ERP systems. So transactionally, mm -hmm. when NOV sells something and goes to work on fulfilling that order by purchasing components and manufacturing things, shipping them out the door, um, and then doing all the accounting for all of the above. Mm. So um, data warehousing is when you take all these transactional activities that occur in NOV's many, many business units and many different processes and many mm -hmm. different right, systems right. and pull that together into like one story of what are NOV sales? What are our open oh, sales wow. right now? Um, yeah. So that data warehouse is where all of that data comes together into one place, gets organized, sorted, and then represented as like one whole, one NOV really. Yeah. Wow. And what's the other section? So the other half of business intelligence mm -hmm. is um, providing that data out to people. Okay. Primarily, okay. we do that in the form of reports or dashboards, pretty pictures versus like an Excel an document. Easy way <laughs> hey, to I display. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, an easy way to display yeah. all of this complex information. Not just display, but we also provide a lot of data feeds and supportive groups who are doing mm -hmm. analytics of their own. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. That's really neat. And I know I wanted to ask you about um, kind of going into the career side of how do you get there I was you know I want to dive into your background and my question was going to be about college which we'll get to but Paul actually had a really good point about well, before that right yeah so I I, I you got an engineer your mm -hmm. engineering degree but like um just curious spoiler alert <laughs> that, yeah. sorry <laughs> <God. Kidding. laughs> but um I'm just curious what life was like for you as you know a teenager or a child like where do you see that desire or some of those passions coming from? What were you doing that might have fueled the desire to take the path you did uh, academically? So I always really had a passion for math and science. So mm -hmm. that, that's kind of a, a ground rule requirement for engineering. Do you remember any, <laughs> any favorite teachers? Like some of my favorite teachers were math teachers. Um, shout out to Mr. Hedstrom. Um, but uh, they, I remember my favorite teachers were my math teacher and my science teacher. So, I mean, but, so you were interested in any, were there people along the way that kind of encouraged that in you? Or is it just something you kind of felt was innate? Um, there definitely were people who encouraged that in me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I adored my high school physics teacher. Yeah. Um, I, I had never thought of engineering as a career path, actually, until my high school chemistry teacher so at the end of our, um, at the end of the year, we were trying to, we were told to go make some kind of chemistry demo for the younger kids, mm -hmm. and we were troubleshooting this and we we're trying to figure out like how do we, how do we light this little tiny rocket ship, which was <laughs> that was our demo. <laughs> how do we light this little tiny <laughs> rocket ship without causing a giant mess and something that we like could clean up easily? Mm -hmm. um, we were troubleshooting how do we do that. So we ended up, you know, repurposing several different chemistry supplies to um, make this happen without making a giant mess and without lighting anything on fire. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, "Have you thought about engineering as a career path?" And I, I hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the thought had never crossed my mind. Um, and I mean, one of my grandfathers was an engineer, but he passed before I was born, so I didn't like have that as a role model. And I wonder, even if that stage, you don't even know what that word means mm -hmm. a, a lot. I, or how that, what does that even mean to be an engineer or, yeah, you know. It's such a broad, there's so like, many types of engineers. Too, right. STEM was not a thing when right. I was in high school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kids these days get yeah. to learn about like what is STEM and STEAM and, you yeah. know, all yeah. these yeah. exciting careers in these areas. And yeah. like, it was never a thing that was really kind of pushed when I was there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I am really passionate about, you know, Engineering at its heart is about taking technology and applying it to people's lives. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I am inspired every day by the kinds of like capabilities that I find in the data world or the capabilities I found in you know mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. And how do I apply that to make people's lives better? How do I bring people in touch with that in a way that helps them to make use of this really cool? you know, new technological development. Wow. Right. And hearing that and, and kind of how you explained the, the business intelligence, I see that 
totally. Kind of that line going through, that's really cool. Well, yeah. I was thinking relationships. I was thinking like yeah. biz, like engineers deal with lots of different variables. <laughs> and you're even talking about like, we don't say big data now, we talk about data and analytics. It's about thinking about how do we mm -hmm. apply everything and actually do something with it, which means we're gonna be, it, it, we have to think about how it affects a lot more things. And those are all relationships. So I, that's what I was thinking, the word I was thinking when you were talking, I was like, oh, this is, this is relational. And yeah. you, you, you just said like, it's about how it applies, technology applies to people's lives. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to all the engineers, uh, myself included, who thought, oh, they're not really good with people. They are, they're thinking yeah. about people. They're mm -hmm. thinking about how the tech that they know applies to everyone around them. I yeah. think that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So I also studied product design in college and oh. you know they talk to mm. you about design thinking. The first step when you're considering any kind of product design or product build is mm -hmm. to figure out what is the need. Yeah. And that's not just looking at like, okay, I wanna build a new top drive. That's also taking a look at like, how do people use these in real life? The people who actually use it, what pain points do they experience? Where could there be improvements? And also, if you gave them an improvement, would they use it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's similar to data. Inovi has tons and tons of data, but unless we actually put it into use to make our decisions better, mm -hmm. it's not really adding value to the company. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of jumping, yeah, so we've talked a little bit of, about college. I wanna shout out, where did you go? Kind of what was your, what was your path from, yeah, in high school, finding out about engineering, and then kind of stepping forward and, yeah. and studying that? Um, so before I started applying to colleges, I, I had a pretty strong idea I wanted to study engineering. Mm. I mm -hmm. started to yeah. apply only to engineering <laughs> schools. Right. Um, but I ended up at Northwestern University in Chicago. Oh, nice. um, go Cats. And <laughs> Are you originally from, from the area? or did I'm from oh. Houston. Okay, so you're here from here. Yes. You moved Ooh. way out up there. So yes. dealing with ice. Yes. <laughs> um, so I lived in Chicago for four years of college. Wow. Yeah. And never saw the sun and <laughs> ran back here. <laughs> Um, I, I thought seasonal affective disorder was not real until I lived oh. it. Oh my God. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. So you were there in Chicago, you're learning, you said mechanical engineering and product design. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of going from there, you know, I think I, I kind of wanted to ask a little bit about like what you learned in college compared to translating that into an actual career and kind of that next phase. Mm -hmm. So I did a little bit of work as a more traditional engineer. Um, mm -hmm. I designed some foundations, so I hope you don't live in one of those houses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I um, did a little bit of work on water treatment plants. And mm -hmm. I discovered pretty quickly that a more conventional engineering life was just not exciting for me. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, when I first started at NOV, I started as a contractor. Um, but I was working with engineering data and engineering processes. Uh -huh. um, and I got hired on, you know, I've been an NOV employee for uh -huh. 13 years, I think. Yeah. Um, awesome. And from there, I spent a lot of time working with engineering master data and the processes associated with that, mm -hmm. and the process by which engineering works and transmits their designs over to manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I moved over to working with just business master data, just more generally. Um, so that includes things like our customers, our suppliers, our rigs, our equipment, our models, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and products that NOV designs. Um, and then from there, I made the hop to just data, data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, along the way, I've had a lot of, I've been really blessed to work with a lot of, you know, really brilliant, awesome people yeah. and learn yeah. a lot of things about what makes NOV tick from our products and our engineers through to totally. you know the people who you know make the make who collect the money at the end of the day and the people <laughs> who procure the products and you know everything in between yeah i kind of want to ask because this this applies to you too i think it's a story i hear a lot at nov which is starting kind of in one place and taking this like super like maybe curved or winding path to where mm -hmm. you end up or end up doing mm -hmm. right. and finding a passion because I know you, right. you started out in engineering as well. Sure, yeah. Um, so can can you talk to a little bit about what were, I don't know, what was that that journey like? Like, do you think you knew where you were going to end up when you started here in that kind of traditional engineering? Mm -hmm. Does that question make sense? <laughs> I, I definitely did not have this in mind 14 right. years ago. <laughs> um, but at the same time, you know, I, I think it's been kind of like a, a continuous growth process. Yeah. Um, yeah. I 
like curiosity will kill this cat at some point <laughs> yeah. in my life. Like that that will be the end of me. Um, so I'm I'm not happy unless I'm continually learning new things, meeting new people, trying out new um, right. new challenges. Mm-hmm. So I've been really lucky to have had the opportunities in NOV to really kind of explore some of those. Mm-hmm. And would you say that's kind of a path that like do y'all think that's that's an engineering mind that that does that? I don't that, think it's or? necessarily engineering mm-hmm. mind, but mm-hmm. uh, I think it does apply to a lot of engineers. So I don't yeah, I don't true, think it's yeah. one causes the other. I think it uh, it might be the other way around. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think there is something unique about being here that allows you, and I don't want to speak for everyone or every team, but we've talked to a lot of people coming through these shows, I've, you know, we, but we, and we also each have our own experiences mm-hmm. of just like, what a, what a weird path that, <laughs> that I've come through and where I've ended up. I would have never thought it was not tiered. It mm-hmm. wasn't a kind of a hierarchical thing of now I'm a, I'm a one, I'm a two, I'm a, I, I think some of that exists here, but I think it's very spread out. And um, and I wouldn't have said that um, maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, but I think once I started to meet more people and understood, oh, there's a there can be a path for me to mm-hmm. do something that maybe I'm you mentioned that I'm curious about. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I, I might be reaching my, my end in this place. Maybe I need to go see what else is available for me. Mm-hmm. And I can do that without leaving the company. Yeah. Um, I found that to be relatively true. Um, I don't know, from your story, it seems like that, but I mean, would you agree with that? What do you think about that? No, I definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, from, from my perspective, engineers tend to be drawn to like really complex problems. Right. And engineering is also at its heart, like the ability, or not the ability, the, the process by which you take a complex problem and start to break it into smaller, more solvable Simplify, problems. Simplify, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So... When you see a complex problem, for me, that's just like, that's my catnip. Like, I, <laughs> I, I can't resist, like, seeing that this is, a, this is a challenge and this is something that, you know, is needed. And I feel like I have something within me that can solve this problem. Right. So, you know, I, I, I've been very, very blessed to be supported in chasing my catnip here. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, it's... So... Like, I- yeah, at your, at, are you saying kind of like at, at the core, that is really the thing that drives you? And how you apply that desire, whether it's in these different teams, mm-hmm. is not as important as, as it is to, oh my gosh, here's a problem that I, I could really have an idea on how to solve. Or I would love to break down this complexity and make it simple for people. Yeah. Is, is that more core to what maybe what drives you and what your desires are? Yeah. 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 I was going to ask, is it ever scary like to mm. make a, a big shift? Like is... is or, or are you so just like <laughs> on to the next thing that like I don't know like you get those, scared? Those are, yeah, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound like no. If you did not just play it. I don't know. But yeah. So is it scary to make those kind of big? I'm thinking if somebody's watching this, um, like I know I had a friend who was an engineer and realized that it wasn't for her, and she switched to medical school. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the time, I was she she had a lot of shame about like I feel like I failed in engineer. I failed in this path and changing. She had some kind of fear around that and I told her I was like I think it's so badass that mm. you're you have the courage to to try something new and go for something different so if there's anybody out there who maybe yeah isn't having be feeling as fulfilled like I don't know I think honestly like was it scary or or how how did you make those decisions to to change mm. your path like what was that kind of feeling I mean change is hard change yeah. that change is always hard um but at the same time like if you are uncomfortable I feel like you're also growing. Mm -hmm. You're also pushing yourself. You're learning new things. You're trying and changing and becoming, you know, what is the next version of yourself? So that's really good. Like, I think it's also important to have people in jobs that have kind of diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, In medicine, it's good to have someone who's done something other than care for patients because they have Mm -hmm. a better a a better level of empathy with people who Mm -hmm. don't necessarily work in that field. Yeah. Um, Right in my job, it's really good to have some background knowledge of what the business actually does and how we actually, you know, mm-hmm. how we put it all together for NOV. I find that in marketing as well. Like we can't just like marketing, marketing, marketing. We have to understand mm-hmm. how a business operates 
as much as we can. Yeah. So I think to anything that's a shared service or outside of each of the individual businesses, I think that's very key mm-hmm. of understanding how our businesses operate, what they're trying to do, um, what's important to their business. So uh, yeah, it's not just about a skill set. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And thinking about so what you do now in your in your role as director of business intelligence, mm-hmm. did I get the title right? Yes, yes. Um, you're great at those. <laughs> I try, you I are. try. <laughs> but now in that, what is your kind of day to day look like? I kind of want to talk a little bit about for anybody interested now if they they're hearing about business intelligence, okay, mm-hmm. or data and analytics. Right. So mm-hmm. what is your day to day job like? For me specifically, I spend a lot of time um, communicating, collaborating with teams around me, whether that's teams in the business to figure out what their, like, what are their pain points? What are their, Mm -hmm. the opportunities that they see to improve the business um, and what they might need in order to support those goals or whether that's other parts of enterprise solutions and what those teams are working on, what are they changing, what, you know, what changes are coming down the pipe for my team to be able to respond to in the data. Um, So keeping up with all of that uh, to make sure that my team knows what's going on is, and can think about like, not just what is the correct solution for today, but what is the correct solution for six months from now or 24 months from now or anything right. like that. Right. Um, I spend a lot of time working on strategic planning for my team. To, um, so as a response to what I've heard from people and what's coming, what do we need to be preparing for six, 18, 24 months from now? Mm. Um, so you know, a lot, a lot of things in our world don't get built overnight. Right. I could, right. I could wish they do. Um, <laughs> but if you build things overnight, just like in engineering, you can expect them to fall over overnight. overnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so I also spend a lot of time working with my team on like, what is our own work process? How do we collaborate more effectively together? Mm-hmm. How do we mm-hmm. put everybody's skill sets together to solve problems in the most expedient way? Again, also delivering quickly for our business who usually can't wait for an extended period of time to get answers on what's going on mm-hmm. um, as well as you know really execute yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel like that's been kind of my takeaway from from just listening to you today is how human it really is like what you're saying sure. like I think my assumption would have been that engineering and data like it must be a very like numbers and technical and I think there is that element of course oh yeah dealing with numbers for but sure. I'm kind yeah. of really surprised or interested to know like hear how much of a human element is involved yeah, mm-hmm. yeah i think it's a big stereotype um <laughs> <laughs> hey listen yeah. i was a marketing major I okay <laughs> i've never had to go to the engineering we're building. so different i, know. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean was, sorry, go ahead. if you don't consider the human all of this technology is not going to get used hmm. so what's it for yeah yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what's the point of the you know world's most perfect car if nobody ever drives it mm. Ooh, put that on the like yearbook quote that's great <laughs> yeah, that, that might be a good thing yeah. to write on the board what am I thinking yearbook yeah, the yearbook this is our yearbook <laughs> yeah yeah similarly uh, in data if I make the world's most perfect report that answers you know 18 different questions but if nobody ever runs it and looks at it right true what did I do right. yeah. <laughs> so what advice do you have for somebody I, I mean I, I, there's so many different levels yeah you could say like somebody in high school who's who likes math or somebody in college looking for or, a career. Like, or, I don't know, or in NOV or somebody who is who, yeah, feeling like, oh, I don't know if I like what I do anymore. Do I look outside? Do like What opportunities are, are there for me here? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Maybe so we could, take it in tears. So, <laughs> the first layer. Because my original question was just like, what advice do you have? But now I'm hearing, I'm like, there's so many different layers. So maybe yeah. for the high school kid, let's start there, who mm-hmm. likes math and science. Or maybe if there are parents watching this and they know their kid likes math and science, what, what maybe advice would you have? For them, for that age. So I do recommend engineering, just as a general practice. Really? (laughs) Wild, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But if if that's something that they're interested in and engaged in, Mm -hmm. um, engineering um, and other STEM STEM degrees, I think, would be probably a good path for them. Um, If they're interested specifically in data, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's common wisdom in the data world that it's a lot easier to take somebody who has really strong domain knowledge Mm. and teach them how to think about it from a data and analytics mindset than it is to take someone who knows data and analytics and teach them what's important to supply chain, Mm. for example. Mm. So, um, you know, if that's something that they're looking to get into and maybe engineering is not for them, I don't feel like that's a barrier, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think it's important to really, like, Again, as we talked about earlier, 
I can make the most beautiful report in the world, but if nobody runs it, it's useless. If we're not engaging with the people who might use it, if we can't have a deep conversation with them mm -hmm. on the material that they're working on, mm -hmm. then we won't be able to get the solution right to begin with. Mm. Mm -hmm. What kind of majors do you think, I, I mean, there's engineering as a broad term, but maybe like specifically if someone was, even if they're within college, you know, there's mm -hmm. still sometimes people switch. What sort of majors do you think feed well into the type of career you have, or on being on the business intelligence side? A more direct path would be through computer science, mm -hmm. um, potentially something like applied math mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. statistics. Statistics is great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, d the dismal <laughs> oh. science, I know. <laughs> yeah, hey. I, I took the bare, <laughs> bare minimum math classes. So. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's late. <laughs> um, I mean, it, if if you're drawn to like yeah. really complex mathematical problems, um, any degree that prepares you to tackle those, I think, would be really great. Yeah. But again, you know, studying something like supply chain or something like industrial engineering would also, you know, it would also prepare you well mm. for uh, a future. Pivot like right. I did like into a the general field. business acumen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Is there anything maybe a post college? Because I feel like we were talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I did marketing. I wouldn't say that my marketing degree necessarily taught me everything that I use day to day. I feel like it was a lot of the outside experiences. Engineering is the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally. nice to hear that. <laughs> yeah, totally. like you're not alone. Not that A and M did great. Whoop. I love it. But I'm saying like the experience you get and the things you do outside of your degree. Yeah, you so can't important. replace that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So is there anything you recommend maybe going back to like the person who's watching this who already has started their career, maybe they're at totally. NOV or outside yeah. of NOV and they this sounds awesome and they want to learn how where how can they break in? How can they learn more about it and get more involved and Try to try like somebody process. who was okay. I'm in supply chain, like you said. Mm -hmm. How would they even break into getting some of the skill set in data, data and, and, and analytics? So, you know, first, like baby step into this would be to start, you know, using a lot more reporting and analytics to drive your decision making. Mm -hmm. But from there, if you want to start making things of your own or exploring more complex um, problems, um, mm -hmm. I can highly recommend uh, Power BI is a really great place mm -hmm. to start. Um, it's um, something that Innovy already owns. The yeah. cost mm -hmm. of you working in Power BI is basically minimal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a ton of training material available online. Are there like professional organizations like that that are uh, that specialize in yeah, or like in data? news sources even? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like where where do you get where do you get the industry <laughs> news on it? <laughs> right. Um, well, I mean, AI is kind of broken in like. In, broken into the mainstream news, but mm -hmm. um, there are a ton of really great, um, you know, journals, podcasts, blogs, things like that mm -hmm. in the area. Right. Um, I don't know if I would recommend any specific one for like a more general approach. Right. Uh, they tend to be kind of focused, but yeah. like, if you're looking into supply chain analytics, there are hundreds of them. Right. <laughs> I'm curious. I've just thought of this um, because, you know, it seems like what you do is its own industry. We have the energy industry that NOV is part of, <laughs> mm. but what you do has its applies not just to ener to energy. It mm -hmm. applies to the whole world, the way the world works. Mm -hmm. For us, kind of the same way we we make commercials. A lot of the stuff that we do is making commercials or documentaries, like kind of mm -hmm. filmmaking. Mm -hmm. That's its own industry, but yeah. we exist within energy. Yeah. yeah. So, do you? How do you deal with kind of living with like? Do you feel like you live with a foot in one place and a foot in the other place? I, I kind of do sometimes where I'm trying to look to other inspiration, not just like what's going on in energy in in marketing or mm -hmm. or in filmmaking. I'm looking to like, you know, who's making Oscar winning films and what are they doing? <laughs> that's that's and then how can we bring and how can we bring that energy, those yeah. skill sets? How can we bring that artistry into what we do? Mm -hmm. So I was curious if you kind of feel the same way sometimes with being in maybe two different worlds. Absolutely, um, you know it's. I feel like if we didn't take a look at like what people in other industries are doing with data and analytics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we would be kind of left behind. We would yeah. be too late to mm. adopt some of those, you know, best practices. Yeah. Um, from a data perspective, NOV is really a manufacturing company, not so mm -hmm. much energy. Like we're selling, True. we're manufacturing things for the energy industry. Right. But at the end, of, like from from what actually transactionally goes on at NOV and makes us money. Yeah. We're much mm -hmm. more a manufacturing company. So. Gotcha. Um. There are, 
you know, there, there's been a strong drive towards analytics in the manufacturing industry for many decades, actually. Mm. So we can also leverage a lot of the, you know, best practices from those guys. Very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, I think kind of going back to it is, to me, a, an interesting problem to solve or an interesting challenge because I have a lot of friends can, that have, I went through college with that the you know they're at these glamorous like you know Coca Cola or, <laughs> or like, these companies that like seem more you know you see them more on commercials on TV mm-hmm. right and part of me feels like I'm kind of so thankful that I'm in in an industry where I have to like solve that a little like it takes a little bit more like thinking about how do we market yeah, it yeah, yeah. Like, how yeah. do we market to people what's we how do we find you know find those people and talk right, to them so right. mm-hmm. I think it's a cool kind of challenge sometimes it's a lot of attention we actually don't want (laughs) (laughs) fair enough yeah (laughs) well thank you so much i think those are the questions this is this has been so cool and and i look forward to highlighting kind of more careers through an ob so yeah Yeah. thank you guys for having me no problem thanks for coming yeah